All right. Good morning. The September 6, 2022 school and board meeting will now come to order. Pursuant to section 31.015 of the Texas Natural Resources Code, I'm chairing this meeting in the commissioner's absence as chief clerk of the general land office as the commissioner is away on state business. September 6, 2022 meeting of the school land board is being held in person at 1700 North Congress Avenue, Stephen F. Austin building. And by video conference call is authorized under Texas Government Code Section 551.125. Access to the meeting by members of the public was published in advance in the Texas Register in accordance with the Texas Opens Meeting Act. Any member of the public who wishes to address the board should indicate so at the start of the meeting or during any public comment period. Uh, with that being said, first item on the agenda is item number one, approval of the minutes from the August 2nd, 2022 school and board meeting. Move to approve. There's a motion. Is there a second? Scott Orm is second. Thank you. Motion is made, seconded, and carries unanimously to approve the minutes. Uh, next item on the agenda is item number two, approval of the consent agenda. Move to approve. So Scott Gorman seconds. Real quick, real quick. How many, what board members are on the call? If you don't mind? Uh, Scott, it's, uh, it's Mark Havens and Michael Neal and yourself. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I move, I, I uh, second uh, Michael's. Okay, so there for item number two, there was a motion and a second. Uh, looks like it carries unanimously to approve the consent agenda. Items number three, four, and five will be in executive session. Uh, the school land board will enter into closed session pursuant to chapter 551, subchapter D, Texas Government Code, section 551.071, for consultation with its attorneys regarding matters involving attorney client privilege information and legal issues and associated with items numbers three, four, and five. Following the closed session, the board will reconvene in open session to complete the docket. Good to go. All right, the open session of the September 6, 2022 meeting, the school land board meeting will resume with item number three. Good morning, Heather Martindale with Asset Management. Staff recommends approval of the sale of the PSF land per the terms discussed in closed session as being in the best interest of the state and the PSF. Any questions? Any questions from the board? I move to approve, Michael. I'll second. Motion is made, seconded, and carries unanimously to approve item number three. Next item on the agenda is number four. Good morning, Amber Long, Asset Management. Staff recommends approval of the sale per the terms discussed in closed session. Any questions? Any questions from the board? Move to approve. Second. Motion is made, seconded, and carries unanimously to approve item number four. Thank Next you. Next item on the agenda is item number five. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, for the record, Rusty Martin, Chief Investment Officer. Approval of this agenda item would constitute your approval of an investment by the General Land Office on behalf of the Permanent School Fund in Westbrook Real Estate Fund 12 LP. The IAC is recommending that the GLO invest up to $300 million on behalf of the Permanent School Fund in Westbrook 12 with a minimum investment of $250 million. Westbrook 12 is a $2.5 billion closed-in global real estate fund sponsored by the Westbrook Group LP and is a follow-on to the $2.5 billion Westbrook Real Estate Fund 11 LP. Westbrook 12 will continue the strategy employed by previous Westbrook funds, which focuses primarily upon pursuing opportunities across the primary real estate sectors that rise from undervalued assets or portfolios, corporate and government divestitures, and recapitalizations. Also in keeping with previous Westbrook funds, Fund 12 will focus on developing a diversified portfolio of assets located principally within the gateway markets of Boston, New York, Washington, D.C., San Francisco, Los Angeles, London, Paris, Tokyo, and Germany. 
We have a longstanding relationship with Westbrook that started in 2008, and it's resulted in total original capital commitments of $523 million across four funds. Investment management staff and the Townsend Group conducted due diligence and analysis on Westbrook 12 through comprehensive document review, internal discussions, and a series of meetings and discussions with the Westbrook team over the past few months. In addition, the Westbrook team made a detailed presentation to the IEC and the Townsend Group on August 30th, 2022. Following the presentation, the IEC voted unanimously to recommend the proposed investment to the school land board. All members of the IEC were present and voted. In conjunction with this discussion, review, and analysis, the investment management worked with the Townsend Group and legal counsel to ensure that the proposed investment fits within the framework of the Texco Permanent School Fund Investment Policy Statement and is in the best interest of the Permanent School Fund. Fund. Therefore, the IC is recommending school land board approve a capital commitment of Westbrook Real Estate Fund 12 LP of up to $300 million with a minimum investment of $250 million. And as always, your approval of this transaction is contingent upon investment management's completion of the negotiation and finalization of the legal documentation associated with the proposed investment. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Rusty. Any questions from the board? I have none and move to approve, Michael. I'll second. Motion seconded and carries unanimously to approve item number five. Next item on the agenda is item number six. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, approval of this item is going to constitute your approval of the release of funds from the real estate special fund account, which I'll refer to as a REST fund, to the permanent school fund liquid account, which I'll call the liquid account. This is for temporary investment by the State Board of Education until it's needed by the General Land Office to fund capital calls related to new and existing school land board investments in the RESFA. As you will recall, in the 86th regular session, there was a bill, HB 4388, that created a permanent school fund liquid account. And the main purpose of that bill was to create this account in order to provide for the temporary investment by the SBOE of money in the RESFA committed by the school land board to new and existing investments awaiting capital calls by the existing external investment managers. In conjunction with the creation of the liquid account, the school land board is required by section 514.414B of the natural resources code to adopt a resolution to temporary, temporarily release from the RESPA funds that are not required for the school land board's anticipated cash needs for the 90 day period following the date of the meeting. If the school land board's cash needs subsequently exceed the amount available in the RESPA during the period, state board is required to release an amount requested by the school land board within five business days of the request. On page two of your memo, you can see a, a history of the releases that have been made since uh, we started this in uh, 2019. And the net amount that has been released is uh, 5.33 billion. You will recall that uh, we, we did this not too long ago and, and you agreed to release $650 million, which was released on June 15th of this year. Um, there is a tremendous amount of money coming into the RESFA due to uh, uh, high distributions from the investment portfolio and continued uh, high distributions related to oil and gas royalties. So that's why there's so much cash that's accumulating at the treasury. Um, just under $3 billion of the total amount that's been released represents capital that has already been committed by the board to specific investments, but has not yet been called by the associated managers. Um, SBOE has invested the money uh, released to the liquid account in a diversified portfolio of equity and fixed income securities. Currently, the market value of the equities is about three and a half billion. Market value of the fixed income securities is just over one and a half billion. 
and there's about 60 million in cash that's at the state treasury. Since inception through June of this year, um, that liquid account has returned a minus 1.93%, but it has outperformed its benchmark by 43 basis points. The state treasury yield on cash currently stands at an annualized 1.91%. And as provided by the bill, the SBOE has so far released approximately $177 million of income and realized gains from the liquid account to the permanent school fund. Um, we did the analysis, uh, you can see in the table, um, and it shows that we're estimating that our cash needs for the next 90 day period will be about $512 million. And there's currently a little over 1.1 billion um, being held in the RESPA at the state treasury. And we estimate that approximately 405 million in revenue will be deposited from oil and gas royalties and investment earnings during the period. Thus, we, we think at the end of the next 90 day period, there will be approximately $998 million at the RESPA. Also, the most recent market value of our portfolio is about $6.7 billion. And given the board's target for cash of 5%, that means our current cash target is around $337 million. <clears throat> so given our projection of just under a billion dollars of balance at the end of the next quarter, um, the expected cash balance at the Treasury will exceed our cash target needs by about $660 million. Therefore, in accordance with the requirements of section 51.414B of the Natural Resources Code, staff is recommending that school and board release another 600 million from the RESPA to the liquid account during the period September 7th through the 21st of this year for investment by the SBOE in accordance with the provisions of section 51.414 of the Natural Resources Code and of course, retain the amount remaining in the RESPA to meet school and board's anticipated cash needs. This will probably be the last time that we go through this exercise before the assets transfer to the new Texas PSF Corporation on January 1st. I'm happy to answer any questions. I would like to say, uh, take the opportunity to say thank you to you and your team and uh, the management of this board as well that's a that's an excellent problem to have uh to, to release 600 million as well as the last I believe the last time we met the historic distribution of 1.2 billion uh to the available school fund so uh, i do not want to miss the opportunity to say say thank you it's excellent work thank you very much it, as you know it's a team effort my team um robert hatter's team and in energy. Um, I don't think we have the final numbers yet in total revenue received, but I know at the end of July, it was around $3.4 billion, which is far exceeds any amount that's been uh, received in any previous year. So that's a um, tremendous amount of money and uh, being good, put to good use Thank you for the kind words. We appreciate that. Is there any questions from the board on item number six? If not, I'll take a motion to release 600 million from the RESPA to the liquid account. So moved, Michael. Yeah, I'll second. And again, my thanks and Congratulations to staff. Thank you for all you've done. It's great news. Thank, Thank you. There's Thank you, Scott. Motion second uh, carries unanimously to approve item number six. There being no further business before the school and board, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. See you next time.